Hi everyone, welcome back to the Puttering Penman. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Camelon 47. I'll go over the packaging, pen design, size comparison, writing sample, and the cost and value of the pen. So, for the packaging, this pen uh, I ordered from Fountain Pen Revolution, which um, is selling a lot of less uh, expensive fountain pens. Um, in particular, a lot of Indian-made fountain pens. Um, this pen, the Camel 47, is an Indian-made fountain pen, uh, and an inexpensive one at that. And the packaging for this pen, it, it came in a padded envelope uh, wrapped in um, some, like, soft packing material, and that's how it came. So there is no original box with this, um, and that was the packaging. Um, the pen design itself, um, this is a very narrow and slim pen. Uh, it's got a blue base here. It's either plastic or celluloid, I can't quite tell. Um, and then the cap is metal. Uh, the cap is about half of the pen body's length. Um, right here on the the clip it says um, Kakuyo Camlin, which I guess is the full name of the company. And right around here it says Camlin 47, which is the pen model. Top of the pen uh, as a blue finial to match the body. Um, this is a piston filling pen, but you can't even really see the the piston knob here. It it blends in really well with the pen. When you take off the cap, it reveals a semi hooded nib. This is a steel nib, um, and here it's got a nice section. It's actually a very comfortable pen to hold. Um, sort of like the Lamy 2000, how you can hold it anywhere and it's comfortable. This pen is also like that um, because of the shape. You can hold the pen pretty far back, you can hold up closer to the nib, both are very comfortable. There are also some diamond shaped uh, ink windows here, uh, which is a nice touch. It is hard to, to see a precise ink level uh, using these um, ink windows, but it is nice to have on the pen. This pen, in a lot of ways, reminds me of uh, perhaps being inspired by the Parker 51, um, and recently I've seen the Esterbrook um, Phaeton 300R, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, looks very similar to this pen, so not sure which one came first. Camlin is a, it's not a very new company, but uh, I don't know if it um, is inspired by the Esterbrook design or the other way around. So the size of this pen, this pen is 128 millimeters capped. It is um, basically 13 centimeters long. Uh, it's, the pen is about 20 grams in weight. Ink capacity is about one milliliter. And then the pen grip, depending on where you want to hold the pen, is somewhere between seven to eight millimeters. So very narrow grip. Let's do a size comparison here. So this is the Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari, and a Twisby Eco. So you can see that the Camel 47 is pretty narrow and a small pen. Okay, and now a writing sample. So the ink for today, uh, which I've shown before in my Pelican M120 reviews, Pelican Edelstein Tanzanite, it's a very dark blue-black ink. Um, I really like it a lot. And the paper, as always, is a Rhodia A4 pad. And your quote for today.
Okay, so let's talk about how this pen writes. So this pen doesn't have any stub-like qualities to the nib. Um, in terms of line variation, not really much at all, which isn't expected because it is semi-hooded nib, so there's not a lot of room for this nib to move around. Reverse writing? It works, it's scratchy, and wetness. This is a pretty wet pen. So let's talk about um, a little bit about how it writes. You may have noticed that when I was starting out writing here, uh, the nib was very dry. So when I was cleaning this pen out, I actually noticed that the cap is not airtight. Um, right up here where the clip attaches to the cap, um, water can actually leak out. And if water can leak out, that means air can get in and dry out the nib. So when this pen is just sitting, um, the nib does dry out and that's an issue because if it, I've left out overnight and then I've got to, it takes a little while to uh, get the pen to write again, sometimes even like holding it against a wet paper towel or, or running it under some water. Um, and that's the biggest problem with this pen. The nib is very smooth. Um, it has a little bit of feedback, not a toothiness type of feedback. It's not like writing with a pencil, it's more like uh, the nib sort of sticks to the paper a little bit. Um, so the nib's very smooth, but you get a lot of feedback. The The pen grip is a little narrow, which some people may enjoy. I find it um, a little too narrow to be a comfortable pen to use for a long writing session. It is a nice, uh, quick note-taking pen. And then one thing to note, um, for any of you who ever had, uh, got, say, a Noodler's Ahab pen, you know that pen has a distinct smell. Um, and, and this pen also has that smell. Not quite as strong, but if that smell of the Noodler's Ahab bothers you, this pen is probably not for you either. Um, uh, the cost of this pen in India, uh, which is where the pen is from, is roughly around $1, um, converted back to US dollars, of course. And if you're buying it here in the US, like I bought it from Fountain Pen Network, it sells for like $14 or $15. So not a very... Um, expensive pen. I'd put in like sort of that beginner price range. Um, overall, is this pen worth it? Um, it could be. For me, probably not just because it dries out. Uh, I don't think it's going to become a regular rotation pen for me. Uh, I really like the nib and I wish there was some way I could fix it. Um, and I really like the design and look of the pen, but just because the nib dries out so much, um, I don't think I'll be using this pen regularly. So, with that, um, my review of the Camelon 47 is complete. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Bye!